Right now we're in the worst part of New York City, Far Rockaway, Queens, on Beach 43rd Street. Uh, and probably the lowest place you can possibly imagine to live. When the sun goes down, you're probably taking your life in your hands just being out here. Everything's for sale. You can't be emotionally attached to any, anything, any assets you have. If you bought something as an investment and you have an opportunity to make a profit, you take the profit and you move on. Let's smoke a cigarette. You got any stronger than a cigarette? I know you know all the guys in town who got the best shit. No, I don't, I don't smoke anything. Pills? I don't do pills, sorry. No, nope, me neither. I don't do coke, I don't do heroin, I don't do speed. I don't even do a lot of alcohol. Running this fucking business is it gets you high enough. You know, you get high off of making money. That's my high. Flipping properties, making money, stacking millions. Once a dirt poor Jew living in the slums of Queens, New York, today a real estate investor, Ben Mala has to work against the clock to reinvest profits to prevent the fall of his $200 million real estate empire. To do this, Ben seeks out distressed hotels, apartment buildings, and shopping centers then buys low and sells high. Nothing surprised me that comes out of Ben's mouth anymore. Last year I had two heart attacks. Um, a lot of that was due to a lot of the stress I had on the job. A lot of the stress I found out was their idea of having fun. The philosophy of Ben Mala is buy, fix, sell. No matter what you're fucking doing, buy, fix, sell. He has a rough exterior because the business. I mean, he's a shark. He's really a shark. I'm at the point now where if I can't make a million bucks on a deal, I can't spend any time on it. This board right here represents our entire existence in this world. And we're not moving shit. We got, we got time frames here. You know, you want the IRS to come in and take half of what we got? That's what's gonna happen if we don't get on top of this shit. Problem is that, you know, once you buy something and sell it, you have to go out and buy something else. Otherwise, you know, you have to pay tax. My clock is always ticking. I'm always out there buying stuff, selling it, and trying to fight that six month window of replacing what I sold. Because if I had to pay tax, they'd go back all the years from back when I started, and it would be a very high tax bill. High up to six, you fix it up, you put a little fucking paint on it, you rent the apartments out, and you're still up to eight. Ben may be living a rags to riches American dream, but he never forgets where he came from. Of course he can't do this alone. Teamed with his sons, his lawyer, and a cast of ex-wrestlers. Hey, ben aims to maximize his profits while staying one step ahead of the competition. Armed with the wit of Larry David and the business hustle of Donald Trump, Ben wakes up every morning asking himself, where's the next deal and where the hell are my Newports? Our real estate agent is gonna fly us down to the new hotel in Boca with our general manager, San Happy Nook. Say hello, Happy. Hey. <laughs> We're going to Boca because that's the promised land. Every New York Jew dreams of going to Boca. We bought 180... 183. 183 suites in Boca Raton. I'm the Boca and he's the Raton. We're gonna fix that puppy up. We bought it for about 50 a door. We'll be into it for about 60 a door and it should be worth a hundred a door. That's $40,000 times 183. You do the math. What's the math, Happy? Tim is here. Tim is, holy shit, that's the fucking plane? Yeah. Holy shit. I don't think I can fit in that plane by myself. I think my Rolls Royce is bigger than that goddamn plane. I thought you said this was a newer plane. Newer paint? Newer paint. Yeah. Seriously. You sure this thing can make it all the way to Boca? The weight balance at 52 gallons is perfect. All right. What you want? 
No, I wanted a jet. Cheap, cheap I wanted a I wanted a cheap jet. There's no such thing as a I didn't cheap want jet. a fucking Toyota. Are you kidding me? You'll make it back. Seneca Falls is any bigger. Hey! Oh! Oh my god. That's your safety drill? We got really lucky today coming down here. Really lucky. It was worth the entire trip just coming down here to see this hotel. Boca is fucking gold. This is a diamond in the rough. And they're all suites that are already laid out like a one bedroom. I could turn this into a very high upscale apartment building. You can't even get a flag. They don't even have a brand name on this hotel because they can't. This place has seen its entire life expectancy as a hotel. Now we're going to come in and we're going to make it into apartments, maybe seniors. And the rooms are perfect. They got a bedroom, they got a living room. It's even got a restaurant in there. This is a gold mine. If I buy this place anywhere below 50 a door, I probably could double my money. If I pay $8 million for this thing, this thing has the potential to be worth $16 million. Okay? There is, there is a definite five. It could be $7 million to make in this deal right here, and it ain't that hard. Even Vincent can do it. I'm going to take garbage and turn it into gold. That's what we're going to do. And we'll probably make at least five to $7 million very easily to do it. It needs all this stuff that the guy just didn't put the money back into. He milked it. They're not supposed to know that we're even looking at the place because nobody knows it's for sale. So can we uh, move on out? Yeah, we're going to work on this deal from home um, and do whatever we can to try to swing it our way. I, it may include a little, uh, who knows, backdoor dealing. You always do it. This place is slam dunk. I don't know why no, you, let's do it. Why I are know. you videotaping? They're not even supposed to know it's for sale. What do you think? Is tapes going to go to anybody? I'm saying they're looking at us. Oh, what do you got? They who cares who looking at us? Look at how you look. That's what you should worry about. My birthday. You can't oh yeah, it's your birthday. I gotta be I nice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's All his birthday. Day. Birthday. I'm gonna buy you a hotel for your birthday. Right. You know that's a good birthday. You know, you don't have to go back to Tampa. You can come right here in Boca now. You're moving up in the world. Like that many black people in Boca. Let me tell you. Flipping properties, making money, and stacking millions. In the world of Ben Mala, this is how he survives. Raised in the roughest neighborhoods of New York City, he fought his way up to a life of luxury that most can only dream about. His ambition, his charisma, and his big mouth helped him become one of the most successful real estate developers in Florida. Yeah, if you want to have a big mouth like I do, put your money where your mouth is, you know? Exactly. So I ran away from home when I was about 12 years old because I had enough of it. It's pretty much the age of 12 I've been taking care of myself. Wow. I've slept on trains in New York. Escaping from New York, it's a real life situation, not just a movie. Right now, we're in the worst part of New York City, Bar Rockaway, Queens, on Beach 43rd Street. Uh, the worst of the worst people lived in this fucking street. The people that couldn't live anywhere else in this entire city had to come to this fucking hell all. When the sun goes down, you're probably taking your fucking life in your hands just being out here. We used to go in our pedal boats and rowboats out here. Sometimes you'd see a fucking head pop up out of the water from the dead bodies they used to throw in the water here. These cars, everything. When I was a little kid, I used to sit, I used to be around here and just dream of the day I get the hell out of this fucking slum. And I just knew one day I would get the hell out of here somehow, some way. That's, that was where our fucking playground toys, playing in abandoned cars. Those projects there, most dangerous places I remember when I was a kid. When I was set, right before I went to service, I, I had a chance to work for some uh, individuals in the neighborhood of the Italian descent. And a lot of Jews are, you know, they get involved. They're not normally the ones that tell the Italians what to do. Hey, the Italians are smart enough to run the mafia, it's the Jews that run the mafia. Now, don't, oh, I can get in trouble for that. Mafia will come after me. Anyway, let them. This is where I grew up. This little shit box piece of shit hole in the wall at 540 Beach 43rd Street where mother used to beat the fuck out of me every day. It was, Total fucking misery. I don't have any good memories of it at all. It was where the poorest of the poor lived. And I think we're gonna get the fuck out of here now because people are looking out their windows at us. So let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs>